Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. And yeah! Oh, oh, we can finally do multi clap. I'm, I'm God, so happy it. with the multi clap. We are with our up. favorite human being on the Your face brother. of the planet. Talking about Rudy Ray Faves. Uh, Ray, what are you packing there? What are you is, putting in there? This is the general, and I got t- and believe it or not, I got turned on to this by Skarsgård, Alexander Skarsgård's oh, yeah. dad. Really? Um, and his dad and, and, he's and from his whole Sweden, family. Right? Yes, they're all Swedish. Yeah. They're all Swedish Marines. Okay. Oh, really? Was yes, was Alex? Yes, Alex was absolutely. That's why he oh, took I didn't. His I didn't fucking role know that. So Did seriously. you know that? No. Absolutely. No. So that's the why guy I took the, the shit so seriously. Go yeah. ahead, sir. No, 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 no. You know who he is, right? No, no. Just Tell a him. movie fucking Alexander star. Skarsgård. Exactly, dude. A huge movie star. <laughs> Jared doesn't know anything. If it's not You've fucking seen Generation Herbie, Kill, right? Yes. If, if it's not Herbie Ice Part Man. 1 or 2, it's oh, dog okay. shit. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Swedish Marine. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's why he played, I, I played it so well. I didn't know that he was an actual fucking He was, Marine. and he took it so serious. And so, so but when we first started our, our boot camp and infantry skills before we got to the uh, advanced recon Did you go skills, through that? I did. And it no, was no, no, no. I meant four generation kill. Did you no, go I, through their little boot camp no, that I they did for the? Oh, okay. I ran the damn boot camp. This guy. I ran the damn boot camp. I ran the, the boot camp, and I didn't know that it, actors are not used to really fighting. No. So we had MMA. You did PT the, MMA every morning. Did you do the pugil sticks and everything? We didn't get the pugil sticks, uh, but we did have uh, Zulu armed guards because there was a. Um, what were you guys was, in Morocco? Uh, we were in Namibia. And oh uh, yeah, we were in Namibia, and there was some issues about some um, actually some white supremacists there. Really? Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? Africa <laughs> in Namibia, which what if you guys know your history, up? if you know your history, <laughs> they're all Dutch. I they're Dutch. Dutch. You're, yes. you're, you're touching Kongs. the dumbest man on the face of the planet. Hey, what are you he talking about? Either. Yes, I do. I know that they're Dutch. And my brother. And my <laughs> no. brother. My brother. He were, didn't know that the word "goad" was a word like to egg someone on. He, sure. I sent him a goad. He didn't know. Code? No, I no. sent him a text. The other oh, day. He was what like, is this? I think he's reverse ABCs. Wrong, that text the didn't smartest make any guy sense. I know like, that yeah, has a poor yeah, vocabulary. Dude, yeah, dude. <laughs> smartest guy in the world with a poor vocabulary. He's, no lexicon. There's some kind of autism going <laughs> on. Right now, for sure. You beaver dip that dip to yeah, you, son of so a bitch. Good. The Why do you beaver dip? Is the well, is the bottom lip gone? Style. Uh, no, uh, it's gravity for this him. This is what they taught me. <laughs> this is what the Swedes taught me, and it was Stalin Skarsgård, the dad. He said, "Rudy." Wait. He's the guy from... Uh, He's a legend. Let him say, Rudy, what did he tell you? Yeah. What did he sorry. tell you? Well, he said... Um, Ru- and he's kind of got that Swedish accent, Rudy. They, they have a strange accent that's, that you can't quite put your fucking finger on it. And he says, thank you for taking care of my son. And uh, I just want to say, I hear you're Mexican. I said, yeah, I'm Mexican-American. He says, well, you're the first Mexican-American honorary Swede. Here you go. I'd never touched tobacco before. Remember and he the gave military? you so he gave you that gave can, this. that can in general. Uh, well, not this one, but one like a general, <laughs> a general. Didn't know, didn't know if it was the same Holy can. You were sentimental shit. about it. Shit! I put one of them little envelopes up in there. Yeah. Immediately, I had to run to the head. This is before cocaine. Sure. And uh, I had to. I was just bow, bow evacuated my bowels. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm ready for a fucking contest next fucking week. You know, I, I'm fucking in my cut face. <laughs> So we're out there with Stella Scott Guard, Alex, uh, some other cats from fucking Jet Kill. Um, Say it. A uh, um, tall yes. actor that. Uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, uh, Forrest Hakeem, Whitaker. Uh, yes, he also dunks basketball. Um, the uh, the cat that did um, Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> brother, you're fucking me the fuck Stop. up. He was a tall man um, inside. The fucking true detective, the bad guy, Vince Vaughn. Vince oh, Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Vince Vaughn was there. He's and got a, a new bunch thing of cats. Out. I was evacuating my balls. Uh, <laughs> no, my bowels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, either my way, God. either way, did you? I bet you evacuated your balls. No, on that. Yeah, let me let me walk. Let's get a cheers here. Yeah. Let's get a cheers. Yeah, yeah, Rudy yeah. Reyes yeah. is finally yeah. here on the show. Yeah. You're one of the most requested well, guests we've ever had. You're listen, fucking here. Listen, listen, you he's son been of here a for bitch. ten minutes. That's a twelve type of alcohol that he's had. Who cares? Give him eight more. He's doing a round robin. 
ready to start with some so beer. I'll go to vodka. I'm now drinking wine. I want to do the generals. Jack of all trades. I want to yes. trades. I want to reset the scene Please before do. we restart this Please conversation. Do. Oh, so <laughs> why so not? Many. So Rudy's got a beaver dip in. Yeah, beaver yeah. dip. Right? Is that he's what it's with called? yes, yeah, up, up top, up yeah. top. You he's, go beaver dip. He's with Alexander and Stellan uh, Skarsgård. Skarsgård. Yeah. Stellan Skarsgård, by the way, is fucking ro- the Ronin. Waves. He's the, he's Ronin, the Russian of course. guy. Ronin. What is the color of the boathouse at Harefield? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's like he is, a brother, fucking legend. legend. Anyway, so you're pounding off and shitting at the same time. <laughs> yes, because you said <laughs> wait, you said you were evacuating your balls and your bowels. Yeah, your bowels. You're doing a full pound shit. Yeah, you're getting rid of. Of all the excess liquid from your body, I, 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 because of the nicotine. Yeah. I've never had nicotine before in my life, and um, of course, if you're doing that, you're crying. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I was, I was, I you're was doing a, a full search. I was in a high state of both awareness and desperation. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I'm trying to pull. Pulled together some posh joint here in Hollywood. I think John Huertas was my um, uh, kind of my go-between with me and, and your Vince spiritual Vaughn. guide. Yes, but it was the Scars Guards that took me under the wing and said, you know, because of this and taking care of my son um, Alex, you are now an honorary Mexican American Swede, the very first Mexican American Swede, and I'll never forget that. And that was uh, Stellan Scars Guard. Uh, let us not forget his fucking amazing role in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah, yeah, yeah. the name. He was the he was the math professor that won the Fields Medal. Yeah. Goodwill. Oh wow! Yes, yeah. that's his dad. <laughs> oh, you're just mad because I have this award yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah, you don't yeah, have that's that. It, that's it, that's Fuck it. your award. Yes, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's it. No, no. Fast forward. He's also the scientist ago. in the fucking Thor movies. Yeah, yes. one, one of the very he's, best. He's yes. like a fucking legend. I mean, he's a legend. And you're saying he was a fucking Swede Marine too? He was, and so was and so was. Alex. Well, they have compulsory service there, right? Uh, yes, but like they some chose kind of the civil Marines, service, yeah, which yeah. is the hardest yeah, yeah. one. I mean, there. if you're going to choose one. Yeah, I agree. I chose the Marines mostly because I just heard it was hard. I didn't know anything about yeah, so you're a, you're calm a, you're or nothing like you're that. You're a knucklehead, so you're just I like, am, I'm a knucklehead. Oh, is this Look the hardest me. thing that I could possibly do? I'm going to sure. fucking do that. Fuck yes. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, way, wait, wait, a brick wall? I just have to run at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do that. I was like, and I don't even like to fucking put worms on hooks. So I'm like, oh, God dang. What the fuck are you talking about? No, because no, I, he I, knows I, exactly I, what he's talking I, about. I, I, you I, let I, him go, brother. Yeah. This is showbiz, baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It ain't show friends. Oh it's show business, Oof. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even like putting worms on hooks. And, you know, I'm a Buddhist. And, and you're like, hey, let's go do recon. Well, are you yeah. a, let, let me go to seer let school. Me, yeah. let, let me ask you that. this. Are you a, are you a Jainist? Do you believe in Jainism or are you just like straight Buddhist? Um, because you know, well, Buddhism lately, is like don't harm people or whatever. But sure, and, and uh, as a and practice, it means well. being mindful yeah, yeah, yeah. and completely intentuous with your with your um, actions. Yeah, but like uh, be thinking su- about lighting yourself on fire. No, 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 no. Which that I bullshit. respect the fuck yeah. out of that. Yeah, I mean it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. right? Of course you do. And did you see a homeboy did not even break roll? He did not. No, he lose sat his there. Military bearing. He South Vietnamese so South Vietnamese guy just fucking lit For himself on fire, Jesus. burned to death. Yes, brother. To uh, to protest the Vietnam War. Vietnam War, yeah. S- set just like this zazen and just took it. Yeah. Until you saw his spirit leave in this. I mean, from. whether or not you agree with him, that's commitment. I agree. I mean, that is a that, that is a, a agree, high form but of the, commitment. I agree of the in, the uh, immense commitment and intention. And, and, of course, you know, as we all know, even from our times in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, uh, a war is very complex and lots of people suffer. Yeah. There and here. Look at our families and such that suffer here. I'm speaking at a Gold Star family event mm-hmm. for Memorial Day. And um, I have a brother named Caleb Medley. He was uh, did four fucking combat tours, the recon marine, force recon cat, and then died in, para- in a in a halo fucking training up his mother fucking hurts every day so so th- now as we're older we see it's a hypertrophic cascade of war but maybe without that war without that destruction there can be no life yeah who knows right you can't you got to burn the forest down sometimes to regrow right? trees so i'm with you brother i'm with you yeah uh speaking of which man you were burning down the weight room i have never seen a man come on this show <laughs> in 400 episodes what Sleeveless. Uh, I mean, he's not even wearing it. Yeah, he's not even wearing an undershirt. I got my scarf. My scarf. Oh, scarf. Yeah, hey. scarf's off. Fuck yeah. the scarf. But he's got a life. knife. What? A, yeah, you've got a knife as a necklace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, doesn't in, everybody in Hollywood? Everybody? Like, like a fucking. 
I'm out of shape right now. Actually. No, you are not. <laughs> I am. I am. You are not. Look, I, and we've had this a lot. I'm gonna point. I'm gonna put this into this camera. Dave, you switch look, the cameras. I, like this is a romance novel for dudes. This is the ultimate guy that every girl wants to fuck. When this got published, you were tagged in this a thousand times. Yes, when Darkness you know, Falls, it's me. Catch it. and, and it is you. You are a living romance novel for. Women, like, it's fucking it's crazy. Your physique. Show, that you, show that again. Show that again. How do you there stay in shape like this? Because <laughs> this, this, this is an animation. This is a cartoon. This is not a sure. real figure. Sure, sure. You are a real figure who is walking around in the world. Jesus Christ, man. How do you stay in this, this type of shape? Wait, 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 wait. I follow wait, wait. your Instagram wait, wait. to try to steal tips from you. And I, I give it away. I'm doing I well. Away. I think I'm doing well in great, life. Brother. But you look great, brother. You are way better than all of us combined. I can answer oh, this. How is that possible? I can answer this. All right. Take it, when when we were down here uh, for the Vet TV Award Show, <laughs> oh, oh, were you, you know, at the roast? We we were all together at one point, and and the award show starts at like eight o'clock, and at like six, it's like, hey, let's roll back to the hotel and get changed and ready. Oh, we go get changed this. and ready, and we're back down. Like, hey, we have to roll back over there. We look outside. <laughs> there is the content. Of Anaheim Disneyland out at the pool, so there's there is nothing but children and parents <laughs> sure. at about six p.m. in the pool, and the Rudy's and here's wearing a Rudy. fucking IBA doing laps. Yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got a fucking vest on, a five eleven vest. He's, psycho. he's got his own kettlebell, and he's sure he's wearing nothing but Ranger panties, bare feet, and he's he's at the pool the doing a full workout with a kettlebell and then a weighted pipe. And he does this for... We're just watching. Well, do you take this with myself. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, my, it's my Sornex Center Mass Bell. I take it with me. And now I have my Brute Force sandbag, too. That way I can fill it up. I love Brute Force, by the yes, way. Great guys. Wherever I'm in zone. Yeah. Oh, Coach Chris Lane. Yeah, yeah, they're so, great. Um, yeah, well, brother, I mean, it, it's not show friends. It's show business. And let me tell you something about this business. You better be camera ready because you can get the call any fucking time. Yeah, and so, when, hey, when we called you today, you go, fuck this, I'm taking my shirt well, off. Well, I did get 300 pull-ups in before I came in. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, but let me, let me stop you right there. It, 300 man. pull-ups. I, yeah. Let me stop you right there, because he hasn't oh, worn stop. a normal shirt in 60 years. Thank you, sir. But there's no <laughs> reason. There's no reason to. There's no it's reason to. Years. Listen, Look I'm at this fucking in, dude. In my, in my, my oh, bit God. at the fucking God. Vet TV Awards, I wrote, I wrote in there. Well, holy shit. <laughs> Rudy still has his shirt on. By the time I got up on stage to say my gone. bit, gone. he was shirtless yeah. in a black tie event. Gone. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was. I guess. But there were porn stars there, so I felt I fit in. Okay, so speaking of that, <laughs> I felt, I, I, again, romance. <laughs> you were a romance cover model, essentially, in real life. By had, proxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> Is there a lot of women that come out of the woodwork who are just like, I just want one night oh. with, this, with this fucking magnificent. <laughs> A beast. Stallion. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what wow. else have you been called? I mean, because well, I, I can only imagine this. I've seen your workouts on Instagram. Jared's not you, lying, brother. by the way. I love you you do this every single day. If there's not a pool of sweat on the floor to start the day, For sure. you officially haven't started your day. I That's can right. only imagine right. what it's like in the bedroom late at night <laughs> oh, when you're boy. looking for that extra cardio. Uh, yeah, well. I take pride in my work. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, I use the fucking mind, body, spirit as a system. Sure. So I push myself really hard. Uh, also I mean, that, yeah. I don't know why we're not talking about this right now. Who do you know that can sit on a bench seat and still have abs? Sean Penn. That's it. He's the fucking military <laughs> Sean Penn. I this is the Sean only guy. Penn. I love that Sean Penn, the shooter. He came in pretty fucking hard on that. Yeah. One. Did you see that shooter? I think it was called. What was it? Or not a shooter. It was called. The, the, the operator uh, shooter. Oh, what that. was the name of that? I know which one. I don't know what it's fucking the name intense, movie. and that's it. Same with you. You're an intense fucking dude, and yep. you've been a legend, by the way, in the oh, business for a long time. Thank whenever, you. Yeah. whenever somebody thank comes you. up to to us about the show and talks to us about military guys transitioning into Hollywood, the yes. first name they bring up is Rudy Reyes, dude. Can you yeah. hook us up with Rudy Reyes? It's got to be that's Rudy Reyes, dude. That's a huge honor. That's a huge honor, and I think some of that though was. Um, Maybe it was written, uh, but because of the timeline, I happen to be of our generation that yeah. just happened to be in that first big production from HBO, 
And fuck, I have Yeah, but to still, be- hands down, nobody has created anything that can compete with oh, Generation Kill. Correct. No. I mean, fuck. No, no. He's told me. He's told yeah. me. He's told I mean, me. I, I included Generation Kill in our curriculum. As an in, instructor. At, in as an instructor. school, the- saying, hey, if you want the most realistic recount of what Iraq or what war yeah, is yeah. like, the only, watch yeah. this the movie. Only, the only thing you, technically I've seen that's even close is SEAL Team. SEAL but, Team. But that's, that's broadcast television, yeah. and you can only go it's, so, it's, far. so far. It's very yeah. yanked down. Like, yeah, by the way, that's you, years later, and yeah. they've and learned the lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they, but right. you say that, but nobody has learned the lesson. The Nobody's doing real infantry dialogue. Is they show No one is. That we are... Just a bunch of boys over there. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're a colonel or a general. They, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. And, but and where are we going? And, and what so, are we doing? So, yeah, exactly. But we're in the and, business and, of making it happen. Yeah. And, and yeah. to that to that point, Jerry, and we're gonna break shit. Did you know that when you were making it, of like, hey, we've got to take this back to where nobody's ever taken it before, and take it from a perspective which has never been shown before. And was that your intent and the producer's intent going in? It was very. It seemed to me, me from Gordon. a writing style, it seemed very intentional. The dialogue, especially the dialogue, the dialogue was, was excellent, so real. Um, yeah. but also because Evan Wright, after most yeah. of the time, Evan Wright was fucking hiding out in the bottom of the fucking Humvee. Uh, he was scared of fucking death, and he's not. I actually, I don't even like him. He's not a very good person. Uh, he's. Uh, he, what do you call it when you? Ex- he's exploitative. I mean, yeah. Um, well, he's a Rolling he's Stone never, journalist. And he's never done respect, anything man. since yeah. then much uh, yeah. of much um, <coughs> worth or weight. But what he did do, because I was so naive, and uh, he he stayed tight with myself, Eric Cucker, a couple other cats, mm. and Antonio Espera. Afterwards, he would uh, do interviews with us on, on the phone, and then because remember, I'd, I'd never been to L.A. or I didn't even know Hollywood was a thing really, except in movies. Right, I'd never had any experience. And he brought my wife and I up here, and we met, uh, rest in peace, Luke Perry and yep. some other people. And and basically, he seduced us, um, and I gave him all of um, – I, I just talked with him all the time. And then Eric gave his patrol logs, and Jeff Carrizales, who you met earlier, gave his patrol logs. And, and uh, uh, he hmm. is hyper-intelligent, and he was absolutely able to capture the culture – However, the production from Jump was also looking at us at first as savages, but when the producers, who uh, the producer was female, uh, Andrea Calderwood, and the director, Susanna White, female, uh, Scottish and British, um, the writers on the program were uh, Ed Burns, who I respect very much, 82nd Airborne, fought in Vietnam, yeah. and then David Simon, who worked for David Baltimore, Washington, D.C. David Simon's done a lot of stuff. They were trying to also show how um, short-sighted the administration was at that time, uh, the Bush administration, Yeah, but they fell in love with us as people, so then they were in a conundrum. They were like, fuck, we were, we were going to try to show this how savage... This piece. Yeah, how, yeah, this is supposed to be a critique on the administration and on our warfighting community, and instead they said, fuck, how can we not love these men? Yeah, And uh, so it evolved. When I got there, remember, I just, I'd been fighting in Fallujah and Ramadi. I'd been doing other stuff too. So to look back, and I fought in Afghanistan in 01. Sometimes I didn't see the production, you know, I didn't see the finished piece till a year and a half later. When I saw how they focused specifically on a few unprepared. Uh, officers and yeah. by the way our officer that they Captain America they portrayed he was not even a recon marine officer remember th- this is a time when we needed bodies so they were this is before guys. Marsox they didn't, yes, even, they didn't yes. even have like there was no selection for yeah, some of these guys nothing, yeah. they just now, got, my, some of those guys were like artillery and chem to- guys totally, they, totally. they were not in, yeah. prepared and my platoon commanders and my leadership always in the unit recon company and recon battalion were fantastic but uh, but fuck we're invading a country brother and and stuff is changing and happening every fucking day. Like how many, how many people at that time in the U.S. military had experience doing a ground invasion of a country? I can no. answer that question for you. Zero. Zero. <laughs> I, I thought we were shit hot, my platoon, yeah. because we at least were fighting and running a gun in, Af- in Afghanistan. Yeah. But still, were we prepared for a mechanized, in a sense, how do you, how do you, especially I mean, We were the same were, way. They were pulling it out of their ass of, wait, wait, oh shit, what are we supposed to do with 
recon. You guys need to roll up. Yeah, yeah. just go. <laughs> that was We're, their plan. Hey, roll up. And, 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 we'll and then figure when, it out. When I pass the tanks and the fucking LAR. Yeah. But, yeah. And then when Cass, uh, close air support, said, no, nah, we can't go that far. We're like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. But thank God we were young, we were aggressive, and uh, completely committed. Um, anyway, when we got to the part where um, they show the children being hit by by the young Marine Tromley, who, by the way, was not a recon. Remember, it used to take us three or four years to create a basic guy. Yeah. I had uh, three and a half years of training before I went to Afghanistan, and I was a boot. My team leader just retired from, from MARSOC. The team leader at the time, infantry, then stay, uh, scout snipers. Yep. That's, and, and that's ranger school. target and, acquisition I mean, for yes, and guys then, who don't know. And then a drill instructor. This is yeah. what you had to do in the yeah. time. Uh, I was a boot. Now we've got to invade a country. We've got to take a unit on paper that says there's, there's 90 of us fighters, but there's really only 40 of us. And so we have to bring in young kids that have yeah. attitude and uh, some infantry cats, and we had to make it happen. So yeah. they were looking down at why a few civilians were killed and well, they also they also took you out of your core mission, right? Well, like, of course, we'd never no, done this before. Doing when when he, so he and I deployed. No, he, had, he and I deployed together no, in, in 07 and 08. That's what your fucking job. <laughs> yeah, he, he and I deployed together in 07 and 08, and no, I was no, in no, the 82nd Airborne, right? Uh, and they put us in fucking Humvees. I'm like, uh, we're light infantry, bro. <laughs> Get those trucks. Over. Those those things for blow sure. up. Get those out of there. For sure, for sure. Like, You're I don't fixed. want to be anywhere fucking near that That's truck. Right. Get out of uh, here with that. You're in fucking IED Alley. Yeah, fuck so that. So it was very... But you guys were in trucks fucking like 90% of the time on that fucking sure. drive to back. Light skin, you know? light skin yeah, fucking, light skin, no fucking skin. bullshit. Chalk back no fucking skin. stick backs. No doors, no nothing. Yeah, yeah nothing. But we had heavy guns. <laughs> and the heavy guns got us over. Thank God we all came from the infantry first. <coughs> we knew how to use Mark 19s. We knew how to. We knew what headspace and timing was. For yeah, the fucking no shit. Fifty cals. Um, we came from mortars and infantry. Um, that's the way it was. Um, it was a hell of an experiment. It was a gamble. And people critique my uh, um, battalion commander or CO, Godfather, brother. He had been in the Marine Corps, and you guys as military men know. Uh, he'd spent 25 years in the gosh dang. No, he, he was he was portrayed as pretty fucking cool. He was, I thought. Yeah. They, uh, I thought he was magnificent, and he'd never been in direct combat, but he'd done everything. He was a recon marine as well. I feel like this they, was they, they portrayed chance. him as a guy that was trying to fucking push his guys into a conflict, but that's your fucking job. That's our bro. job. We're marines. <laughs> We're just marines. Before like, we put go on get the, the fucking fight, recon, guys. And, 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 Don't come back and tell uh, you Iwo fucking Jima. Fight. Iwo there's Jima. A, there's Iwo a, Jima. Yeah, seriously. There's a thing in the military called uh, recon by fire. And that's, that's right. You I just walk direction. out into yeah. some random area, yeah. start shooting at random buildings until somebody shoots the exactly. fuck back. Recon, that's that's right. Right. What the this fuck? Is sure, this is literally something you're briefed it's not, that evening. They go, you're going to do a recon by fire. Uh, Sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to go fucking start shooting until somebody starts shooting That's back. That's right. You yeah. see, uh, uh, you see a, a threat or a potential threat, neutralize it, see what happens. Or, more than likely, when you start going into zone, you might be taking fire, so yeah. neutralize it. Like, we think this is a dangerous area. You guys go park yeah, there. That's exactly yeah, what Go hang out. Do it Pretend the like no truck shit. is broke. Yes. Hey, someone get out so with a fucking milk jug, you know, uh, looking for so water. We, we literally used to put fucking, like... Uh, <laughs> Army looking equipment out in random areas that I we thought it. were high traffic oh, areas and just wait to see what would happen. Yes. And then put sniper teams on that for to sure. see if somebody would come for, fuck for, with it. Check out that MSR yeah. and see what's happening. SKT yeah, teams. Man. SKTs, yeah. Right. I mean, what the fuck, man? But that's how you so if you, if you walked into a fucking uh, Marine platoon or a team room of <laughs> any team anywhere and somebody like the opposite of Godfather who was risk averse trying not to get their guys into this shit they'd be like this motherfucker absolutely and, was, is, and yeah. he knows this like, come on man like in 2005 and we had fucking curfews after no roll, it was it was clear hunting it we was. went out the gate and anybody that was on the fucking road is a fair game I believe the <laughs> ROE was and this was conservative <laughs> three vehicles together at night kill them yes <laughs> Five males together kill them. You don't need guns. Uh, and then, of course, any poor child with a shovel, I had to kill them. Uh, well, if they're near suffer. a road, yeah. 
Well, if yes, near a road, yeah. Well, right. But, but if it's in, if it's in Afghanistan, what's a road? Uh, sure. Now, see, I I fought in Afghanistan early. Yeah. The um, I mean, the IED threat they, they really were didn't smart. start no, until 03, early. Yeah. They were very 03, smart. 03, they four, we were yeah. hot headed and we were ready to kill. Yeah. And I did some cast and I did some sniper work and then interdictions. But quickly they realized the entire United States was there to fuck everybody up. So they just chill. <laughs> Mm. And then when we got bogged down in Iraq, they came on hard. And I respect yeah. all those brothers in Helmand and and uh, all those brothers in Afghanistan who came later who had to fight the hard, hard fight. Yeah, the fighting through the mountains, man. Fuck That's fu- yeah. Fuck that. And now honestly. we see why PT is so important. You ask me why I'm in shape because I'm fucking psychologically damaged to being shamed by being the weakest and slowest swimmer in the unit at one time. And I was at the unit as high end as we are of 300,000 Marines. There's only 300 recon Marines. Um, there's always somebody better that, uh, that could run faster or wrestle better or box better or swim better. So you were in a, um, in a Petri, di- Petri dish of, of, um, competition, of competition and masculinity. Yeah. So I had to keep pushing. I had to keep pushing, pushing. And that's why still to this day, uh, I even have an eating disorder too. I cannot eat unless I've done physical exercise. And during the day I can only eat snacks because one time I fell asleep now I was hard on myself, but after two weeks of no sleep on the invasion, uh, we had no food left and we were eating the humanitarian rations. Yeah, yeah. And I remember eating some of the beans and rice and eating so long. We were so exhausted. It was the middle of the night and I ate a few bites and my eyes burned so bad. I said, I'll just shut them for a second. Fuck. I was out cold. And when I wake up, my whole team's out cold too. I'm the heavy gun. My team is done. Everybody's out. And the fucking platoon moved on. And at the end of the fuck, a fucking half a click down the way, I see these two little chem lights. Oh, I hit the fucking gun. Ah! Scared to fucking death. Yeah. And so to this day, I cannot eat during the day. You're kidding. <laughs> How many years is that? 16 years ago. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 16 years ago have you, have you ever Listen, thought uh, yeah right have, you, have now, you ever thought about seeing anybody or like did you ever do you ever talk to to a therapist and I say hey I have a therapist. How, how do i get over this i'm not sure i want to we're uh, we're within yeah I, I mean I, you look great maybe yeah. that's the fucking hey, answer no, we're i'm the same way, right now man. like like I love you. i know like, like, 16 years we're within days of the invasion because i was in basic training and all of a sudden, they pulled us all. Uh, I was in. I was towards the end. So we're like what okay. a week away from yes. like the anniversary. Yes. At this like, time, I was looking at U two fucking tape. U two. I was U2 looking at U two still images. Yes, because of U two only Through takes the one. Stupid lens. <laughs> yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. So <laughs> so they we, we've come uh, a long way. We have. I was still in basic training, and we were actually preparing for graduation. And the uh, the and drill instructors come out. And they go, hey. We got to come inside right now. And on the news is the tomahawks and everything blowing up in Baghdad. And they're like, we just started another war. No way. Yeah, while we're yep. in basic training. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shit. Good for business. I mean, pull up your die. socks, you grab your cocks. Just fuck yeah. I might die. We'll yeah. see. We'll yeah. see. Uh, let me ask you do you miss it? Oh, of course. Of course. That's why I can't necessarily leave it. I agree with him. He, you ask him uh, if he's seen a therapist to get over it. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. I agree with him. Yeah, like I so, like. I like yeah. being on that fucking edge. that, that edge. edge all yeah. the time. It feels great to me. Me too. So, not only that, but like you. I mean, you look great. Thank like you, in a non gay way. But thank you. My when you look at that, like Jesus Christ, you're in a diet that everybody wishes they could be on. Sure. So maybe you don't want to stop something like that. I just eat like less, that. and at night I eat more to, so I can sleep, and I make sure all my action and work is done during the day, um, and. Um, I guess. Well, you know, I, I'm getting older now. I'm 47, and uh, you don't sorry. look it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Jesus Thank you. Christ, you look better than all of us. Okay. What? Well, I'm always. Yes. Well, I'm always. I mean, I'm always ready for to be. Rudy, I'm out. 34. Okay, what's well, this? Yeah, uh, yeah. JT, JT. Yeah. So one of my brothers, one of my brothers is a, a CCT brother uh, that works with me on Force Blue. His name is um, is Dan, and he's the fucking. Well, there's a couple brothers. Um, which Dan um, he's big and strong and tall uh, blonde and I think he's out of Oregon uh, and Andy Andy is only 30 years old but came in at 18 I think he's done seven fucking trips um, he I'm not gonna tell you his last name because he's still in the guard yeah but, I, know, uh, I know who you're talking Dan about Dan is just it, lovely we're, we're friends a, with his wife with Andy's yeah, wife yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he, he brings this little um comfortable uh, portable chair 
and it's at the team house. And we had somebody over the other day, and they were sitting in that his chair. And he says, do you, do you know how many fucking kills I've had on that chair? Because he fucking stacks air, right? <laughs> now. Um, so uh, we started talking about maybe I can come back in in the guard. And I've always entertained coming in on the guard uh, um, on the Air Force side or the Green Beret side. Just, I thought, even though I mean, How much time age, do you have in? I did eight years in, in recon. Because you've got to be able to retire by like 55, I think. Fuck, right? retirement. Just use me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I what always, is, what, did you look at the age cutoff? No, I haven't. But in my, in my romantic mind... I'm always you know you, you could going. you could go through yes to help. We'll just get you one of those. Uh, have you have you seen uh, Bench Warmers that movie? Yeah. We'll get you one of those birth certificates that says I am, I am. 35. I yeah. love it. I love it. And and I, I think you should roll out for Air Force Special Warfare. Wouldn't that be I think wonderful? it would be, I can arrange that, I schools. think. I've got a lot of my schools I'll have to go to. And I, I'm a, I went to TACP. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, I, I could do some more school, another two years maybe, and then fucking go fight. Yeah. Or what if they need me? More importantly, what if they need me? Something happens and they need me. So I always keep myself in a state of readiness. That's the problem with America. Not, when I say problem, I mean a problem for anybody that wants to invade this country. Yes. 40,000 people get out of the military here every month. Wow. 40, 40, comma, zero, zero, zero. And, you know, there's a lot of turds in that group, obviously, in any sure. group. Probably there's 80, a lot of fucking warriors, probably too. Probably 80% of them are turds. Yeah. But that twenty percent, twenty percent, dude. That's eight thousand people a month that are getting out that are still ready to fight. So. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and schooled up and yeah. got and have an immense experience. Um, again, I, and also too, because I work in film and television now too. Uh, and you know, I work with my Force Blue. I'm the figurehead there. I help create this lovely organization to rebuild coral reefs with commandos and warriors like ourselves uh to repurpose our skills and our aptitude and our attitude to serve uh i got a clothing company as well virtus brother no one's hiring fat Rudy. virtus is by the way is david, david Wood. Wood. great fucking dude if you're watching david yes love david you, i love you brother buddy. you know what you've done in my life uh, we call each other twins yeah he's a twin Look of at that he was uh, david yeah. was a twin of business yeah and i was a, a twin of heart and I've been with the company for one year, and yeah. now we're working with Spartan Race. And we're yeah, doing yeah, all kinds of great yeah. stuff. Um, Explain that comment for me that nobody's hiring Fat Rudy. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I, I I like that. It, like, that's why you obviously keep in shape. And I that's think, part of it. And part of it's become work. Yes, yes. No longer just passion. Right, and and, and, and I that's think hard. That, and a lot of people look up to you in that space. <sighs> and I look, I follow his Instagram, and I have for a long time. Where it seems like you will work out. Anywhere on this planet, any yes. country, any yes. surface, inside a hotel room, absolutely, in a, in Many a fucking times. pool, airports, pools, hotel rooms, wherever. Um, and by the way, can I get one more wine? Yes, absolutely. Hi, yeah, yeah. We, we okay, bought the I'm bottle get down into there. This. Okay, Jared, right there. Boom. Thank you, brother. This so is much. from uh, and this Josh. This is not a sponsor. No, by it's the way. Josh Sellers, though. It's a great winery. It is really it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're big. I fans. love them. We're big fans. Uh, well, so, so explain your process when when you're going on vacation or you're traveling or sure. you're acting in a you're well he star- travels you're star- in a fucking tunnel when you're, when you're starting in a movie I want to add this to I've you though like what this guy is right. doing just with his fucking side gig the not with with, with the non profit. <laughs> He's sitting underwater for eight hours using a fucking bone saw, bone saw cutting yeah. coral reefs and moving them. Like, this is my nonprofit work. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I'm underwater for eight hours a day it's in a, scuba gear. I- explain that to the audience. What it, walk them through a day-to-day in the life of Rudy Reyes. How do you, uh, what time do you usually wake up? It depends on what freaking hemisphere of the earth I'm in. Okay, let's say you're in Austra- Australia. Uh, and which what I, creature which is next to you? Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> how much cocaine he did the night before? Oh, sure, sure, sure. And sometimes that's valid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to let y'all know, you know, uh, sometimes after immense combat and immense intensity, um, there's also uh, uh, the waterfall of depression that comes. Yeah. Think of the adrenals. You got to get that adrenaline that back up, brother. Yep, yeah, uh, big our time. systems have been blown out. And so no wonder we fall into drugs and alcohol. Yeah, uh, I know but, I sure did, and I and I was not prepared for it. I'd never even touched nicotine, like I said, much less alcohol, drugs. Yeah. Um, um, shit, the first time I tried marijuana, I thought I was freaking swimming on top of the water. I could not handle it because it was so fucking intense. Um, ah, I will say this. The best high in the world is uh, being physically fit and doing rad shit with your best friends. 
Jared and knows all about. Him. Look at him right now. Yeah. yeah well, actually, you're looking better than last time I saw you. That's um, not good. Oh well, you, you know we go through. <laughs> I went through a phase. I go through phases too. I'm kind of fucking fat right now for me. Um, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Serious? You what look is like he you talking can fucking about? Run right through the goddamn wall like the Hawaiian <laughs> I mean, punch no man. Question, but, <laughs> like the Hawaiian punch man <laughs> right now, right through the fucking wall. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, there's a commercial series yes, in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, instead of the freaking glo- uh, you know, global style. Instead of showing that Marines uh, commercial with the burning <laughs> swords and the dragons, just show you run through a fucking wall. That, that'll that'll sign everybody up. Through the roof. Rudy through Reyes, through roof. Yeah. comma forty seven years old, and is just punching his way through a wall. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> exactly. absolutely. Join the Marines. Yeah. Don't be yeah. a pussy. For sure. Fucking get involved. So, so, depending on where I'm at, I know no matter what, I must do some training. So, these days, mostly body weight. I bring my rings with me everywhere. I got my brute force sandbag. Now, I brought my center mass bell everywhere until I started going to freaking China. Because then they thought it was a bomb. And I was a, I was locked away for freaking 24 hours. Um, I didn't get my center mass bell until I was after Shanghai and Mongolia and then Hong Kong. Um, so I'm like, well, I'm not going to bring any it's pretty steel easy me. to x-ray a weight. Brother, those, <laughs> the, the, the Chinese government's very strange. They don't fuck all. around. Not at the all. The Chinese government's secret police doesn't have a name. E- brother, <laughs> yeah. yes. That's how secret it is. <laughs> yes. It literally does you don't not even have see a them. name. That's how secret it is, <laughs> For dude. For real. Yeah. Minority report style shit out there. They were a real tree. Um, so. Yeah. So, so, so what, do you, what do you do over there? When you go to China, what do you do? Uh, tons of body weight gymnastics. And I've got, it's interesting. These days, I do not do such massive volume. I do everything so strict, and I make sure I squeeze my core, everything. And I have coaches, Chris Frankel. I'm with Soren X people as well. Brandon Lilly is I've been hearing a lot about Soren X lately. What's Bert, they're awesome. magnificent. Yeah. They're magnificent. Yeah. They, they build the highest end training platforms, uh, equipments and such. All of Matt's gym is all Soren X. Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. Everything yes, is yes, yes. And it's, it, no, it's fantastic. And the, and the president came yeah, you were, out specifically you were just there to for set like it a all week, up. Yeah, right? yeah. Bert came out. Yeah. And yeah. every time I go there, I, I feel like I'm at a CrossFit gym. Like, that's better than a CrossFit gym. It, I'm like, it God is damn it. because they're doing booty-ass rogue bullshit. Yes. And that's made in China. Um, is it really? Our shit's made in America by people who care. Tons of veterans in the factory right next to, right behind the showroom. And they have pride. Uh, you might have heard of the LA Lakers. You might have heard of uh, the Patriots. You might have heard of Dev Grew. You might have heard of CAG. We build oh, all their systems. We don't know who that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. all right. I'll None give you a cutie for me to use. Let, let's. <laughs> 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 they're really high level stuff because they care. Uh, and they're beautiful friends of mine. Uh, when I was hurting about five years ago, uh, when I first got out of a um, uh, PTSD program and such, um, shortly, you saw me you shortly after yeah. that. It was the Sornex people that took me under my wing and counted on me and, and, and believed in me. Same with Rick Elder of Beyond Clothing. I, yeah, I love, love Beyond, Rick. too. God. I know, it, they're I know, they're a great company, but their products are also super fucking they're good. They're the best yeah. in Holy the world, shit. and they brought me on, and they took care of me. They gave me a stipend. <laughs> they gave me work, and now I'm a model because of Beyond's work. Listen, um, you can't walk into a 5'11 without seeing you oh, all over you. the fucking it's world. It's like you're yeah, everywhere. <laughs> it's you <laughs> and you Tim, Tim Kennedy. Kennedy. It's like, yo, Holy you and Tim shit. Kennedy. You yeah, guys are two and people. Tim, a lovely brother of mine, too. We, we, we love Tim. Yeah. We love Tim. Time. He's been yeah. on the show uh, numerous times. The yeah. two of you guys are, are fighting for the best shape in the entire world. And, yeah. and also, Tim, also, as you guys know him personally, uh, he's got his, uh, uh, what he has to uh, portray for the work. And then you know him uh, underneath that's even more emotionally available. Yeah. Sweeter man. Oh God. No, he's Kinder. a very Kidding. thoughtful human he is, being. Yeah, very yeah. brilliant man. And he's and he's actually he's gotten dinged up by the media or well not yeah. by the media, but by the veteran community a couple of times because he's just like saying shit that's real. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yes, dude. I agree. Like, um he's but but uh, like he said something about crazy people shouldn't have access to guns. You're like, Oh, you're a favorite oh, that's gun right. control. Like, shut the, uh, that's right. No, he's crazy right. people shouldn't have guns. I don't want he's a correct. crazy no. person. Does anybody agree he's correct. with that? Yeah, yeah. He's correct. He's at least across the board, but he so he was on Rogan and he took a lot of shit for that. Yes. Yeah, it took a lot of a shit. A lot for, on social media and, he was and everywhere else. He was speaking from the heart and he was speaking from a place of intelligence. Uh, I love him, man. Uh, we got some other people. I mean, you guys are in the media world. You guys are the Rudy Reyes and Tim Kennedy of, of your freaking um, uh, Of the platform. podcast world. You I, are. That's the way I and look at things it. Too, you know? And other things too <laughs> with your cross-pollination of uh, humor, of production, of coffee. of It's wonderful. Um Many people that are on the civilian side of the house, I try to say even citizen, because, you know, sometimes we have a, um, or we in the past had a stigma 
that it's only us and civilians. Now I say, hey, we're all citizens. Uh, they're looking at you guys as a model. Isn't that fucking rad? That makes me very proud. It's uh, it's weird that people look to us for answers sometimes. Yes. But I mean, if you have the answer, then you got to give it up, right? For sure. Well, That's the well, way well it's it's service things, service continues. Yeah, and it, it, in particular with Black Rifle Coffee, where coffee is something that went mainstream. So it could be veteran, it could be civilian. It, it didn't really matter. Yeah. It just so happened that these guys were the coolest at the time. Where it's almost like a military version of Jackass, where you know you have this culture that you guys have created that is now cross mainstream. It is. It, so it, it's not just military or civilian. It's, it's just, not niche. It's these beyond guys are niche. cool. Yes, it's beyond yes. niche. Yeah, uh, it's become mainstream, and I and I think that is very important. Um, it's important for me to. Well, it's authentic. You and can't. That's you, why you, you have, can. Do you have it. someone like Matt that poor, that. That has this portrayal, but at the end of the day, that dude will kick your fucking ass. Yeah, you can still yeah. back and the oh, fuck up. Oh, and he can also pull a pistol. Yeah, Matt's not fucking and around. Fucking sh- yeah, shoot yeah. extremely well. Yeah. He can fucking. <laughs> so it's like you, the 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 authenticity in it is like. Oh wait, when when have you seen that? When have you seen a character don't. on a screen that? Oh, right. by the way, will fuck you up. Because if you look at like K- K- Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? You could beat the shit out of the Colonel. Yeah. What the fuck was he a colonel of, right? He wasn't a colonel yeah. of shit. <laughs> shit yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matt and that and you guys the worst like, colonel ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you, you get it. You know Nasty what I'm saying? Child that's, a, that's a great <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nailed it. In, in, in today's society, though, I think people are looking for uh, companies and products that are more genuine and more real and more, you know, that you can either look up to or oh, hopefully yeah. be. Well, what's the you know, the most popular form of media right now on earth is true crime podcast. Yes. Man. Yeah. Like nothing is more popular right now in advertising dollars or in viewership than no, than that fucking genre right there. Yeah, because it's and that's real. why. Yeah, and it's real, and people and feel the like data they're, they're backs a part it up. of it. Yeah, the data backs. Oh, it's, it's exactly. Yeah, sure. and human yeah. stories back with, with yeah. the coffee company. It's real, and people feel like they're a part of it. They're a part of the brand. Yes. Either they're supporting veterans, yes. or they're supporting this kick-ass bunch of guys that they see online right. doing all this crazy shit. That uh, that is a company they built on their own, and they're like, fuck yeah, yeah that's amazing. With you in particular particular with being in generation kill like jared said that was probably the the most honest portrayal of all time, time. It, I, exactly. not, not of that time it's I, still to this day like, it still holds like, but think, you were think, the dude and you're here yeah. on this set and you live that life and you are that guy still it's am. not a front Always will be. it's not a fucking Always hollywood movie you weren't green screen now we like, were talking about you right now yeah if i had to give one guy a fucking bow knife to go out and, and kill someone in the middle of the knife right now well, out of all what? of us you it'd be what? you and you know what? i could make my cami paint with some pitch and some uh some fucking uh firewood and I could destroy the freaking uh, outline of the human head and shoulders with B nose as a target indicator. Uh, so high points to the body. Man. Exactly. <laughs> That's right, doggy. You know. We're yeah, all SOP. To we're us, all it's gun- just SOP. We're all gunfighters here. <laughs> <laughs> he has agreed. Hey, and this should be a project that you take on as one of your. Directorial fucking legacy. Oh, dude, if he dies, I'm getting Keanu Reeves no. to play this motherfucker. No, in the no, 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 and we're calling it a goddamn sure. day. For let's sure. let's murder Keanu Reeves and have him play Keanu Reeves. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Brother, do you let's know murder Keanu no, Reeves. The idea is we all fly to Oregon for fucking three weeks in the summer. Oh, and you want to reshoot Rambo? Rambo one on with the iPhone. Oh. Is, but dude, we only use iPhones yeah. to make the movie. Sure. Yeah. Right? Which has been done. So that this has been done. Somebody did it for their wedding proposal. Okay, let's do it for the They remade all of Rambo. No, I would not give that credit as it has been done. Ah. That was weak. We are, it, it, but but they did it. They fucking did it. If you had we your choice, have him but it, playing but if, John Rambo. If you had your choice to, to be in any military film or TV production of all time, what would it have been? There's so many good ones. So, of course, Michael Mann is my favorite American director. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Heat is, is one of the greatest uh, movies of all Thief, time. Thief, Mohicans, uh, Heat. Very underrated and not enough people talk about it. Collateral. Oh, Collateral's shit. a great yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> Jay. Right? Yeah. Um, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise Jamie and Fox. Jamie Foxx. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What, about Apocalypse now? what does Apocalypse Now sit on I your list? I love Apocalypse Now because I also just looked at the the director book of... of uh, of Coppola for yeah, The yeah. Godfather. Yeah. 
such uh, an intense mind and so committed daily. He uh, and Oliver Stone both were like along that same kind of mental journey. I'll tell you, if I had to do a military film of the past, which one I would do, of course, would be The Deer Hunter. Oh, Oof. shit. That's Michael a great Cimino. one. Yes, Nobody brings is. that up. That's oh, three and a half brother. hours of magic. Yeah, it's, it's it really is. good. Because yeah. it deals, it's, it's almost like. It was, uh, yes, it was it's, way ahead of its time. It's way ahead of its time. It's almost like, uh, uh, well, Apocalypse Now in a, in a lot of ways where it dealt with the part where he's out of war for a little bit and has right. to deal with the dissociative disorder and all that stuff. And he goes but back into in, it. In, in Deer Hunter, he goes back home. Yeah, back home. And so he's it's not home. And that way, it's a lot like. Uh, uh, what's what the fuck? Full Metal Jacket. Full where Metal Jacket. It's yeah. basically two movies jammed together. One where you know they're in basic, which is like basically being home. Yes. And then two where you're at war, yes. right? Yes. So I like. And a, what about when they catch when they when um, when Walken is in the mental hospital, the the VA hospital, still in? Uh, you're going back to Deer Hunter, right? Yeah, Deer yeah, Hunter. Yeah. And I think he's still overseas, uh, probably in Okinawa. And they're looking through his wallet, and they see, and it's got Meryl Streep, his, yeah. his wife. And they said, "Do you want to call your wife?" And and then he just starts fucking crying, and he never calls her, and never goes back. If yeah. you call. And I had that in my life too. Like eventually, when I finally came out of Fallujah and Ramadi, I was not the same, and I I had no connection. I didn't want to connect to my wife or anybody. I was a workaholic. These are things, these are themes that we were seeing then uh, that, uh, uh, that were not uh, passed forward to us. None of us knew what the fuck we were going to get into afterwards. We're fantastic in the field. But afterwards, I was lost. And that's what I loved now looking back at, at Deer Hunter, why it's so profound, is that uh, that uh, complete disconnect. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then Michael, the Nero's character, going back uh for nikki and mm. and remember we find out that nikki's still alive because mm. john savage's character who who lost his Loves legs, legs. Yeah, gosh yeah. and by the way what a production yeah you'd never see an actor hanging underneath that bird so that was really robert de niro hanging on the skid of that fucking hill really oh yeah look look at it again you're gonna they would never risk that anymore it was a very high level shit back then so uh they go to see uh, uh john savage's character and he's just got a um, a footlocker full of money that keeps getting sent back right, from yeah. Hanoi. Well, <laughs> and then so Chrissy goes back and, and and as we and think about this, think about the Russian roulette and suicide. Yeah, it's what we're going through too in our community. So a lot of ways, yeah, yeah, really, really ahead of its time with looking at yeah, real there, issues that fall lot, out and and what happens. A lot of those, a lot of those done. literary devices weren't really evident until you experience it, it and yeah, then look well back said. on it let, well later. Said. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of these movies were, uh, a lot of the Vietnam era movies were yeah. warning signs to us. I can't agree. Like with we're more. starting to, we're like, hey, we want to go <laughs> fucking fight, and there's like this whole library of content. Like, yes. don't go do it, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Fuck you, motherfucker. But, but we're also we're men, we're masculine. We I would. Have, there's no young. amount of there's no amount of evidence that would have stopped me from and doing that's what, what I'm I did. saying. This I don't is, give a shit. When you look at anthropology and you look at, at the human organism, you look at even our closest cousins in biology. Uh, the primates and and our high end mammals in the ocean, they have they exhibit the same behavior. And then be, below that, don't, the feline. Don't start. I can see you thinking about dolphin right now. Yeah, oh, he, well, he's just, already going to dolphins right, right now. Well, even the, the prides uh, of lions and jungle cats mm-hmm. too is dominance. Look at the wolves. Dominance of the male keeps um, uh, um, an uh, it, it keeps the village life together to fight yeah. as a pack. They have to f- uh, fight off a uh, rogue and other packs and then yeah. they have to hunt and secure hunting grounds this is human civilization is, human. is really weird like yeah. how big do you make your pack yeah. so how far do you do you have to make your pack if your pack is this big then you have to protect an area this big right yes. Yes. to keep people the fuck out of there yes. so you make your pack this big now and you have to protect an area this big there's only so much space out there yes and you know for that reason because i have outreach just like you all because you impact and touch so many lives uh, sometimes I have problems with fans that because I've touched their life through um, uh, proxy of book or of media or what have you, um, they believe and they feel, because remember, uh, organically and anthropologically, they do feel connected to us. Yeah, yeah. This new technology, all these super phones and all that, this is only the last 
freaking 20 years. And before that, we only were running electricity 120 years ago. This is all very new. Primitively, though, we are the same as these wolf packs and, and um, these primates. So they feel they're connected to us. But fuck, they're not to me. And when I do not reach back out like they want me to or whatever, they they say, you know, fuck you, you're phony, and how could you let me down like this? And I'm like, holy shit, just like you said, I still only have my periphery of pack brothers and, yeah. and a, a woman here or there that I need because we need feminine energy to even fight for. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, a it can it can create some disharmony. It gets it's weird. It, it gets, gets weird. Weird as fuck. Yeah. But that's civilization. Civilization is just weird, man. Yeah, I mean, right. I don't I don't know to what degree do you take it. So if you if you agree with the premise that you're talking about, and I do, then war is inevitable between it tribes. It is. Well, look at look at. Well, I mean, fucking existence history. Of Every, course, yeah. Like forever, yeah. it's like we can only spend about forty or fifty years going. You know what? We're good with this. Let's go fuck with the guys next door. Yeah. And, <laughs> And then, <laughs> then, then you have to you have to think about yourself as a warrior because we're. I think you're born that way, in my opinion. I think so too. But you have to think about it that way. What's the most moral form of war? The shortest war possible, in my opinion. Yes. So, so often, go into war to and everybody. fucking dominate. You have to. and then get the fuck out. Reestablish Look like at the Mongols. There's, there's no more martial pact. What the fuck, man? Yes, what are we doing in Iraq and Afghanistan? We're not rebuilding those civilizations. No, we're, we're not. We, we we're fucked not them up. A, them. We fucked them up a little bit, and the people who were in power before that aren't dead yet are just going to come back into power as and soon as we, we fucking leave. And that's we made a mistake, dude. and we didn't make the mistake. It was not our policies. No. Uh, you know, it's not ours to ask uh, what or why, but to do or die, right? Um, uh, I, what would be wisest is to, to, to kill anyone and everyone that will not succumb and then bring in it sounds form. harsh but it's the truth look at the look at it look what's at the, time eternal. what's the alternative what we're doing now if uh, a, it's uh, pussy well no it. no yeah. what, and look what how many more been, people are being killed yeah for what it. we've been hit with now it's is, half measures is, is what the, it is. Yes, is it is the well wrong said. people pulling the fucking puppet strings because they think that there's some sort of moral means of that's a, ridiculous. A way to conduct war. well there's it's, there, it's ridiculous it's yes, bifurcated it's there's one there's one side of the crowd that thinks there's some kind of morality to war which is absolutely insane oh. and there's the other side that thinks there's a profit motive to war which is well, true i was talking to him yes. about it i was talking to but him about it this morning is is where the backward shit comes from is we saw kids and women getting abused in iraq oh, for and sure. if we I'm wanted to interject we were told no yeah. That's not why we're here. Okay, then why the fuck are, are we, we here? <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. It's so interesting uh, for blood and treasure. Uh, but this is uh, uh, this is uh, every animal species. Yeah. If you cannot control your immediate environment and lock down your hunting grounds, i.e. resource. Yeah, channels, resources is what it's really about. And I'll tell you what, the idea of human rights is very novel in the anthropological freaking scheme of things. When it comes down to the day-to-day -day life. And it's only our yeah. first world that can even yeah. freaking, uh, uh, that even has the adolescence to think this way. Yeah. There's no such thing as human rights. There is uh, win, lose, and what's legal. There's win and lose in what's legal. <laughs> this is why... Oh, wait, I'm going to ask the obvious. I, hang on, hang on. I, and I hate to interrupt you. I'm going to ask the not obvious question. Not to get question. heavy. No, 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 no not We've at all. We've been heavy right? for a minute not now. Not at all, yeah. but I'm going to ask the obvious question. Have you tried DMT? No, uh, I, I'm... I'm uh, I've been so offered to go up you, on this you know, trip. You know that trip that Logan and I are going on to yes. do ayahuasca? He's booked That's to be on that too. Okay, He's are booked you going? to be on the same trip. Well, you know what? But we'll see what happens. Because He's of busy. some things are happening, I may not be able to go. But now that I know that these guys are going, I may have to go. Um, and, and I'm heavy with my with my Zen meditation, and and um, and I do a lot of dream work too. Mm -hmm. uh, dream you know, work. When, yeah. when you say dream work, how so? Uh, I practice twenty company? times a day, asking mm -hmm. myself if I'm dreaming, and uh, I write my dreams down in a journal. And then do you have a totem? Um, well, a totem for the audience, by the way, like yes. an inception is something that you see that you know you're dreaming. Correct. Like it, a, it, something it, that spins, it doesn't stop, or a red ball, or some stupid bullshit it, like you, that. And you know the difference between both? Oftentimes I do now, but look, I'm 47 years old and I've been doing this a long time. Um, and still, actually I'm in the habit of it. Like anything, like any kind of discipline, you need, need to be in the habit. Also, when I wake up, the first thing I do is start speaking on what I'm just going through. Like, fuck, you want to know what I was going through right before I get here? I, w I took a nap. Um, 
I've been pushing myself for a long time. So I took a nap before I got my fuck push my pull-ups in. And, um, because I knew I had to work today in my dream, I guess my eyebrows are really fucking crazy. And, and, um, uh, and this lady told me that I need to fucking make sure I manicure my eye eyebrows and, and trim up my beard. And, and then we were talking about production and, um, and then I went to the ocean to these like special jellyfish alien creatures, like these, n- n- complete like gnosis alien jellyfish that speak to me at this special place in this water that i always go to so he's definitely done dmt yeah yeah, so you've done a lot of drugs is is dmt i think dmt is combat i've done so much it's it's, it's inside of you already yeah but it's just just reactivating essentially yeah it's definitely what makes you dream now there may be something to this too because i had a very traumatic childhood Mm -hmm. in some ways i don't look at it negatively i try not to i've still got a few things that hurt me or a few things that i can't get past but possibly because I had a very traumatic childhood early on. It made me shift consciousness or become a sociopath. And there's something called epi- epigenetics. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you just described Dan Holloway to a T, brother. Epi- to a fucking T. Yeah, well, with epigenetics, certain genes are turned on or off. Yeah. By positive it's, and or negative, negative stimulus. It's, it's, it's the uh, nature-nurture thing where it's a, it's a hybrid. Where yes, you're, you have that by nature, but it doesn't get switched on unless you experience certain stimuli in your early years. Yes, basically yes. Is what he's positive or negative. And I yeah, was either in way. some ways maybe blessed with such negativity um, that I got other genes turned on. Um, what sort of negativity, if you don't mind me asking? Abuse, horrible abuse, physical. Same. Physical or mental? Physical, mental, sexual abuse too. I grew up in a boy's home. Brother, trust, trust, trust me, in the wolf, if you ain't got no wolf pack and you're a small child, we've seen it in Iraq. Oh uh, yeah, seen Afghanistan. Yep. I see it. I see it in Congo. I see it in fucking um, in Kenya. Uh, if you're an eight year old fucking orphan fuck, in Iraq or yeah, Afghanistan, you're, you're getting target. fucked by the dudes in that city. It's so true. And you know Period. what? Jesus I was. Um, I call them Mervs because I got muscles and curves. I was the same way when I was a little boy. So I was really sweet, and I had fucking predators all over me like a cheap suit. So that. Um, gave me the impetus to start lifting weights, training, doing wrestling and boxing, and to protect myself, yourself. Yeah, absolutely, and to be the hardest target I could. And I had two little brothers, so maybe it was the asset of having two little brothers to protect. Right? Yeah. Yes, it turned on the genes to protect. Yeah. And to this day, this is what's given me um, every every piece of blessing I've mm-hmm. had to this very day. The same for me. I didn't deal with Bless the sexual you. shit, but the, the regular, <laughs> oh. no, but that's, that's the regular, an, that's an amazing way to look at it. It, it is it's yeah. an extremely positive outlook because there is look a thousand people out there. 999 of them would say I am life's too hard. Yes. I can't go yeah. on anymore. This is going to fucking ruin my life and I can't get out of this. Whereas you are the one person that I've ever heard of who looks at this as, a positive situation it, it, saying, yes. hey, this changed my life for the better, and I'm a better person for it today. Thank well, goodness I turned me into a hunter. Gauntlet. It is what it is, right? I mean, I didn't deal with some of the stuff you did, but I was definitely kicked around pretty severely when I was a kid. And to me, it made me hate bullies. Me too. So that's the fight, reason. Fighting for good. Yeah, like, I'm going to fight for anybody that's weak or downtrodden. That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah. fucking joined the military. Same, same reason. So I, I joined the military. For me, it wasn't like 9 11 definitely had an impact because it was, an, it was a an event but uh it was the idea that you know we're a force for good in some way we were gonna find a way to be heroes no matter what yeah and i still hold tight to it you know what even i fucking dress still like a fucking hero for a reason it really this is my coat of arms I, I i'm always ready and i always am fighting for goodness and truth and for those that are weak um it's but even then if you see someone that's in the way of the bigger picture, you got to stomp that ass, right? I, I do. Mean, I it's do. Just, like, <laughs> has it happened though? In, in, it it in real definitely life? it happens all the time, dude. No, but but, it's but war, for you man. in real life, because I'm sure a lot of people look at you of like, man, is Rudy Reyes ever go out and say he had to fucking beat ass at night at a bar or at oh, a my fair? Brother, or... That's how I ended up in that mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well, but also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, uh, 
This is the military Ric Flair right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude. I love him so much. I love my wrestler so yeah. much. What's he, oh 72 my. now? Yeah, he is. He's is still alive. I got, we got to get yeah, him on this thing. He's birthday. 70. Can we 70, get him on yeah. this thing? Just Let's had get Ric Flair on this thing. His we, birthday we, was like two weeks ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We've, yeah. we've been really, oh, really close. So uh, he, had a, he had a heart surgery. He almost yeah. passed. Yeah. Ended up beating it. So he will be on. Fucking love him. Yeah, I'll be very close. Let's get Rudy part of that one. Yeah. So I um so as a Mexican, American kid. Kid from the border I was living down in Corpus Christi in a little town called Robstown and my, and my father's a Vietnam veteran Rudy Ray senior and he's not my biological father but he's the man that gave me his name yeah, just yeah. a fucking G for a Latino man <laughs> to take a woman with another man's child in her stomach this is very rare. Some people don't know about Latino culture, but that, yes. it's very macho. Very That's macho. not a thing that happens very often. Not, Machismo. Yeah. yeah, very much so. So um, he was a policeman and a constable and a sheriff. And looking back, now we see it. He, he'd come home, and first of all, I was so proud of him all the time. I got to um, brasso his fucking brass, mm-hmm. shine his boots. Texas, so Calvary. Yeah, it's boots. Texas, yeah. Um, and all he talked about was whooping motherfucking ass. <laughs> he beat ass. I shit you not. Beat ass every fucking time he was out there. And, of course, a little crazy with the women and shit. But, God, I idolize this man. Can you imagine being a sheriff in South Texas in the 1980s? Yes. No. Can like you in imagine? the early 1980s? No. Just whooping well, people's into fucking asses. Rudy, Rudy Reyes. <laughs> Good night, right? sweet Charlotte. You're sure, getting your Vietnam ass kicked. Vietnam veteran, Vietnam yeah. Marine, Quay City, no. Quay City. I mean, come on. Right? Oh, just a G. Just the baddest G ever. And, uh, and he'd take us to wrestling. And we'd go to wrestling. We were little. And I remember uh, uh, getting the Von Erics. Yeah, if any of you all from Texas know about the Von Erics. The Von Erics. Kerry was my favorite. Or no, no, no. Kevin was my favorite. Kerry was the big fucking uh, um, barbarian looking guy. But uh, Kevin wrestled without shoes. Uh, he was a super high-end wrestler, mm-hmm. uh, collegiate. Short trunks, fucking strong, just uh, mesomorph style. Tarzan of the white people um, like uh, I mean it was just fucking magnificent so I got to wait afterwards and I had the little photographs that my daddy bought me and I got them to sign these things so they fucking made an impact on me man Yeah. and I knew right there I mean I knew that I wanted to be like these fucking men fighting the good fight and being strong and being ready at all times and yeah. it was cemented in my early childhood yeah same same for me I mean anytime I saw anybody Picking on someone that was weaker than them, like you're a piece of shit. Yeah, Go fight somebody that's bigger than you. And sometimes you may jump into a fucking fight with five motherfuckers. I, you do what you do, right? Yes. I mean, yes. So, yes. Did, so did you go to college or did you go directly into the military? <laughs> uh, no, I did not go to college. I had a full ride scholarship uh, at a prestigious art university, four year art university. But was it the Art Institute of San Francisco? Um, no, it was uh, Art Institute of Kansas City. No, oh, that's a good one too. It's yeah. very what, those what nicknames have we come up with today? Chicago. Because we well, you we'll had get there. one. We'll you get had there. one for yourself that was a <laughs> art artist or yeah, uh, I was a painter. No, I've, I've completely rebranded. What Rudy is Ray what, what, what did you call him earlier? Uh, I don't remember what was it called. Murder. Violent hippie. No, it was called. Vi- no, it was yeah. called murder hippie. Murder, murder, murder hippie. hippie. Yeah. yeah, murder hippie is a great level. one. Next you, level. And then you said you said something artist, violent artist. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 an, artist was, an artist of violence. violence. Yeah. Artist of violence. Which actually is a Christopher Walken thing. He and Man on <laughs> Murder Fire. Murder hippie. Remember oh, Man on Fire? Yeah. One of my favorite He's films. He's talking about oh, yeah. Denzel Washington's character. He's like, he you know, Marine? you can be an artist of any kind of, of food, of a painting, or whatever. This guy, Crease, John Crease. Creasy he, Bear. Yeah. He, he's a, Creasy Bear. Yeah. yeah. He, he's his art is violence and he's the <gasps> fucking best at it. And you're yes, about to watch him paint God, his fucking masterpiece. Film. It's a Brings great me one. To tears every fucking time with little The same Lupita. one. Because it tells a story that I don't think in two thousand four when that movie came out that no. we were quite ready for yet. No. It was the story was this guy had been doing black operations for years. Uh-huh. Right? Black ops. Yeah. yeah don't yeah. ever but say real black ones. ops. Real, yeah, real like, ones. Like he had, he had been <laughs> fucking, Central America. Yeah, El had, Salvador. And this was during the 70s and Nicaragua. 80s. We just murdered everybody down Fuck there yeah. for years. Fuck uh, yeah. And he comes Agua. back Fuck. totally destitute, has nothing left to live for, and he finds yes. something to live for. And that's what a lot of veterans these days, it's, it's either the adrenaline or the purpose or something, and guys just can't find it again. Sure. You know what I mean? Rudy found it. His yes. his impetus is just being the most in shape forty seven year old on the planet. Yeah, no, 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 no. Start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this, Rudy. Yes, I, I, after all these years on this earth, what are you living for? What is your 
biggest passion you right know what now. so um i have two beautiful children dylan and belladonna i don't get to see dylan uh, very often I'm, it's in a contestual relationship with his mother um uh, when we were together i was still very sick i was or I was still very injured and uh, also i don't know if you guys were ever in the state in which uh, as a war fighter and as a as a artist of violence um that you didn't believe or or witness anything or anyone that rated to fucking tell you what to do. <laughs> my one of my favorite Christ. Max Martini is one of our favorite people in media right now because he's just a fucking legit dude. But one of his quotes from the unit that TV show that was on for of a course. while. So they're getting court martialed for some bullshit, and he comes into the into the uh, to the office with a bunch of uh, uh, brass. And they say something to him like, aren't you going to fucking salute your betters? And he stood up and he said, I have no betters in this room. And he turned around and walked the fuck out. Yeah, I felt like that quite a bit. As a matter <laughs> okay, of fact. Yeah. so that's where I was yeah, at. You're over here trying to make a career out of this shit where we're the ones actually fucking and sweating that's the and point fucking right dying there. for it. Like, I, I, like, like, literally, there's a bunch of us. And dying even if we live. Yes, yeah. exactly. There's a bunch of people out there that fucking gave up everything more than Damn, we did. Is that right? Yes, before. And, and, and. When I go back, when I got back to regular society, I'm like, not worth it, not worth it, not worth it. Like, I got to find something that's worth it again, dude, because yes. that's, where I was that's at. a struggle for people. And on the surface, I had a gorgeous girlfriend, and she was a doctor, and, and I was living in some modicum of, of safety and stability, um, but I needed some engagement. I was incredibly depressed. Drink chaos. Yeah, I, well, because I thrive in it. I was you a master need of chaos. Yeah. You need yeah. chaos. Right? You train your body to That's to right. be effective That's when right. chaos is happening. That's right. The minute it's gone from your normal, life. Normalcy is you're sitting in your fucking in your hooch and you're fucking caught oh, yeah, watching yeah. some stupid bullshit on TV, not paying attention to anything. That's right. And then all of a sudden, war. That's you right. know what I mean? <laughs> and if it's not war, I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> there you For go. years, you train yourself for that and shit. And then you're engaging, too. Yeah. So now it's, um, um, now it's uh, imprinted in the nervous system. Yeah. So uh, in lieu of that stimulation, I was contracting, too, but I was trying my best to assimilate. I could not very well. I was drinking, doing hard drugs, and... Uh, and then my girl loved to see me fight. She loved knowing she was, she had the baddest dude in the world. And I was trying to dress it all down. I was wearing even collared shirts back then with sleeves. I was trying to now this, <laughs> out of everything you've said today, oh, this is that is the one mind. thing I can't believe. I will never believe that statement. <laughs> I was wearing I was trying, shirts with sleeves. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, try to assimilate. I like uh, how that's your measure for normal society. <laughs> I had sleeves on. Sleeves. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but Def- yes, there are females out there that want they want, think they want that. I they think crave it. I, I want to see them fight over me. Well, I think it's innate. If we look at base society and base animal nature, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, it's dominance and control. And yep. then that's why we are the best mates. That's why they want us uh, as mates. We complement each other very well. That's the point, right? Yes, and right? we make hypergenetic yeah. vigor with our children, yeah. and our children will be freaking Genghis Khan as well. Um, so, <laughs> you know, Genghis Khan has something like forty-five million living. Descendants. What I understand is one out of fifty of us is related to him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He spread his seed a lot. Yes, he spread his seed well, a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah, you've only got that's two kids. Lot. That's a yeah, lot of work. Yeah. I'm like, hey, yeah. you're behind, Maybe Rudy. You Maybe you should start more. catching up, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Stop pulling out, when Rudy. When is this motherfucker going to be aired, by the way? Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, on Monday. <laughs> Monday's episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Needless to say, uh, when things didn't go right, or like, actually, my, my ex got upset that she was sharing me with the entertainment business and I did a horror picture with some hot women. By the way, it was completely professional. I mean, if anybody knows filmmaking, it's not sexy. It's freaking, it's fucking brutal. Well, especially the last like five to ten years, if it isn't professional, you fucking get me to it and you're done. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You can't fuck around anymore, dude. Like, there's uh, no fucking around. Just to uh, double tap on that motherfucking target. (laughs) <laughs> no one will ever say me too with me. You know me for some oh, time. I know. I might. Yeah. You've been making a lot of physical okay, contact with me <laughs> throughout maybe this with interview. Men? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they wish. <laughs> right? Right? Um, so, uh, Mr. Don't Give a Fuck, uh, right here. Well, right. I mean, shit. 
by the way, my fucking next 50 is going to be better than the first 50. Uh, I, believe, I believe it. I fucking believe it. I have metal legs. I yeah. honestly think that you yeah. might live to be two, three hundred yeah, years sure old. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. 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 Um, I went, <laughs> I've never been arrested. I mean, have I killed many people and have I... Fuck, did I... Was I pr- privy to delivering money to a bunch of fucking scumbags? Is there some fucking nebulous <laughs> shit out there? Yes. <laughs> War is very complicated. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I'm talking about L.A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 whoa! Oh, my God. Ow! Ow! So, so uh, it's, it's, I'm talking about both. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, I went to court for the first time. Never been arrested. Uh, what did you go to court for? Because... Um, uh, my my ex old lady said that she was in fear for her life. Gotcha. Because and she t- took my son. My son is uh, my Dylan. So even to this day, I don't get I don't get photographs of him. I've uh, only able to see him one hour at a time, and now they're not talking to me for about the last nine months. So I fly in to see my little son. I'm not allowed photographs. I can only stay with him in in the living room. And um, and remember, I was injured back then. I had to go through anger management courses that I had to pay for. I lost work. Uh, I was unemployable for some time. And this is shortly after this is when you met me, brother, when Rick Elder took a chance mm-hmm. on me and I built myself back. But uh, at first, um, it was so painful and I was so upset at myself. I was so depressed. I, People I like thought, us are used to losing. What? We're no! not used to losing. I want to touch on this because here's when you say anger management, there is no, there is no comparison at all to the the whole the whole thing of coming back from yes, um, coming back from uh from from war is you're so used to meeting violence with more violence. Yes, of course. So when you get well, mad when somebody fucking yeah. shoots at you, when somebody fucking does a complex three ambush guns to on everyone. You, you go three yeah. guns to everyone. I'm gonna fucking bomb your neighborhood. I'm gonna fuck yeah. this shit up. Then you come home and someone's rude to you in a gas station it, and yeah. you're like that's it, I'm killing motherfuckers. That's it, that's so it. So it's... And I'm like, why am I when, in this position? When you, don't, when you get so yeah. accustomed to meeting anger with extreme violence... For safety. That is... By the way, it's for safety. That is the it's reality not for your own of safety. PTS. It's for safety. Like, seriously. That is the reality. It is. But that's yeah. the safety of the entire... stress in our world. Yeah. Yes. It, it, was, it, was, it, it, it was a complete viable way of doing business because it protected not only our team and our squad or our platoon. How about the higher adjacent... Uh, Security supporting and patrols that we were involved with too. Um, y- you understand? It, like it the was, first thing it was you benevolent learned, to do. The first thing you learned at S- in the school of infantry was probably the phrase "violence of action." Violence right? of action. Locate like no shit. And destroy. Yeah. Locate like, close within destroy. When, when you're in, so the army does all of infantry basically all at the same time now. But the Marine Corps does basically then you do SOI. That's right. right. So That's right. Uh, the first thing you learn when you start doing infantry shit is violence of action. Violence yes. of action. The more aggression. violently and quickly you can do something. You meet any form yeah. of aggression. Aggress with, rule. With right. yeah. 400%. Three to one. Yes. Three to one. Yeah. <laughs> three to one. Yeah. Like he said, three to one. That's literally in all it's of doctrine. our fucking yes. field. It's doctrine. doctrine. It's doctrine. We don't fight unless we outnumber them by three to one. And period. if we and if we don't have the numbers, we pull back and I start fucking raping. But that's the fu- why yeah. this guy's work. And yeah. all, all he and bombs them until they have one person to R three, so and then we go in and kill everybody that's else. Right. Sure. Like that's sure. the plan. A thousand to one. No, I, I understand it, but, but Rudy, <laughs> the insurance policy. All states got you covered. I'm going to be honest. In real life, Ru- Rudy's a thousand to one. Uh, like if, if you walk into a bar with Rudy Reyes, oh, forget about true. the rest well, of the fucking bar. I'm not too beat up. I know. And you're um, a beautiful man, for we'll Christ's sake. Like you, you look like you've never been hit. Oh, I have a few times in my youth. Uh, <laughs> and, then he, and then he learned and got uh, better. Of course, I kept training and training. Uh, we'll talk what's that? What's that? About South what's Texas? that phrase? Sure. Uh, that phrase. But we're an old man in a profession where men die young. Wild brother. Now we're looking in the mirror and we've got the gray. Yeah. And we're looking like, fuck, are we the old men? We are, yeah. And we are. Absolutely. Fuck yeah, don't fuck with us. That's what I would advise. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Where where is Rudy Reyes at right now in life? Uh, uh, Peaceful? Are you married? Are you dating anybody? uh, Uh, How's your relationship with your kids? You know what? It's uh, the the children. um, And I was going to speak to this. Even the children are not enough to save my life. And I don't know if many will speak on this or, or 
or as honest and um, uh, forthright in speaking uh, about the truth of who we are and, and what kind of men we are and what kind of beings we are. Not even my children were enough to save my life. I had a pistol in my mouth and I was finished. Um, I needed a mission. I needed my men and a mission of virtue, and I needed to make an impact as as uh, heavy and as far-reaching as I did as a warfighter in in the third world and to topple regimes. I needed to continue to do that, and it was Force Blue that saved my life, and uh, Jim Ritteroff and Keith Saw, my co-founders, they brought me to Cayman Islands uh, because uh, I was on the streets. They ran into me in New York on the streets, man, about 140 pounds, uh, really, really sucked up on hard drugs and didn't give a fuck no more. I don't even remember meeting them, actually. Um, and uh, they uh, they had a like a senior trip daughter's trip down to Cayman Islands, and they were so loving. They said, Rudy, can you come? And I said, I, I don't have any money. I have no work. They brought me to Cayman Islands, and they got me in the water again, and I saw all these beautiful life forms. I saw all the, these families, subsurface, and the corals. And I'm a combat diver, so I'm used to finning my fucking ass off. So I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. After a few days, I start calming down. After a few more days, they say, well, Rudy, a lot of this is being destroyed by the um, uh, shipping industry and the cruise liners. And also we've got uh, uh, climate change. And, and I'm, I'm so happy you're here, but it's not going to be here much longer. And I said, well, then we need to fucking do something about it. And they're like, okay, yes, awesome. And then I thought, okay, me and my fucking EOD guys and my frogmen are going to fucking put on, put on explosives on the ships and blow them up. <laughs> that was my first idea. And, and <laughs> that was probably the drugs. <laughs> Let's blow up the fucking cruise liner. Yeah. Just, and like, no, let's not and, do and, that, and Rudy. Like, and, and then my boys were like, Rudy's okay, you know. Usa, usa. No, we've all we've all been there. Right? The, the guy cuts you off in traffic. I'm gonna fuck yeah, this dude up. Right. Right. I got an AT4. Yeah. Ah, right. and, and now I'm seeing families again, and I'm seeing beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing yeah. beauty that I've not seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we just dis- uh, we decide, okay, let's find a way to fight because I've got tons of dudes like us that need a mission, and we're uh, vital, we're able, and we're skilled in arduous co- uh, conditions. And so we teamed up with science and reef scientists and um, and eco um, um, warriors and thinkers, and I created Force Blue to rebuild and recreate coral reefs also now we're doing turtle missions we're doing uh shark missions um we're doing um triage to the disease in the florida, florida reef track project protect um that's what saved my life and and my children are, are so important to me and they are me but also there's a part of me like Genghis khan i know i can die tomorrow and my kids got my freaking genes yeah they're gonna be fucking fine but uh, for Rudy Reyes to continue to live, I needed to believe in something virtuous with teammates and brothers and sisters around me that, uh, of a like mind, and that's what I'm doing now. Are you married? No, I'm not. I was married. Um, and it's been tough with relationships because I'm committed to my um, I'm committed to my mission first. I'd say in another three or four years, I'm going to start another family. That's what I'd like to do is start another family that I'm there for. And when I have enough financial uh, security, which I'm getting close to, thank you, David Wood and and Virtus and um, and, and the people that have believed in me from Sornex, um, I'm getting there. Um, it's tough being the real John Rambo. Notice in the movies, John Rambo doesn't have a girlfriend. He falls in love with the, the Vietnamese girl, right? But he's still protecting and serving. Um, yeah. It's it's taking me time. It's taking me time, but I know it's in the future. I I know that I'm gonna have a good woman in my life in the future. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's also amazing. You, you compared yourself to to John Rambo. That's something I wish I could do. Oh bless you! <laughs> yeah, but you can. So. I, you can. I you wish can. I could. Because we the, the first time I met you, by the way, because I, I, I that was my exact words to Jared I, after that event. We did a live event at Shot Show. Yes. It was me, you, Christmas Abbott, and yes. Jared. We oh, were on Christmas! Stage. My Christmas! I love you, girl. I know, and I said, dude, he I reminds me of, of John Rambo. Yeah. And you yeah. said to me, you go, dude, this is the closest you will ever oh. get to meeting. <laughs> Rambo in real life so enjoy it and I was like awesome uh, but immediately afterwards so we, we did this gig on stage it was outside it was cold 
you were still shirtless. Uh, I mean, you still didn't have <laughs> BTUs, you had a scarf BTUs, on. Uh, uh, metabolism. From you, had a, you had a scarf on. Yes, I, I did. Uh, Bert and Christmas were up there with me. Yes, I was yep, throwing yep. shit on the tank. I was throwing champagne yeah. bottles at the tank. And I said to myself, I was like, I don't understand why he's not with Christmas. They would have created the most genetically oh my God. unbelievable human no, of all time. Genetic no, you can't, yes. you can't do that, that because that child that, would see in the dark. No, that, <laughs> <laughs> that baby would have. Built in PBS 31s in its head. That baby would have that baby would have punched its way out of oh, her sure. fucking kill stomach. Christmas yeah. like the gush dang alien. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. We need her around so we can't have her yeah. get murdered. We do, we do. Right. And, and, and look, we're, we're the point of the show where you get to the drinking bro of the week. Yes, sir. Uh, Rudy Reyes, uh, this is somebody that has inspired you, somebody that has helped you, somebody that has made you the man that you are today. I, I mean, realize, I, think, I think he gave it to us earlier. I realize it's probably impossible for you to narrow it down to one, but if, if you... If you had one, who would it be in your life? I've been blessed with um, male role models and mentorship. Um, of course, I have that badass Rudy Reyes Sr., mm-hmm. who I think is an angel still because he's passed on. And um, I'm going to give it to Rudy Reyes Sr. I'll tell you why. I he's probably had... he's up there beating up hippies in the sky. Right. Right. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and, and, and I was only with him three years of my life, of, of my childhood. Um, before I was in the boys' home and a foster care in the boys' home and such. Um, but my daddy, holy moly, you all. Uh, so at School of Infantry, I had a chance to try out with recon because I was the honor grad in Iron Man and then was on Camp Guard getting fucked for three freaking weeks. And I'm in charge of all the young Marines that are mm. running to Tijuana and trying to escape. And I lived in the squad bay for three freaking weeks and did uh, uh, relief in place and mm. handled the guard duty. And the corporal of the guard, when uh, Sergeant Sparks came through to run the end dock for First Recon Company, he said, I've got, a, I've got a young Marine. It would be good for you. And so I somehow made it, somehow made it just to get a slot at school. But the first thing I did is I ran up to the phones um, in SOI, and you had to buy the AT and T calling mm, card yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. God damn, I'm still dude. in woodland camis, just Seriously. like this. And uh, and I call my dad. I call uh, Papa Papa Reyes, and he always calls me dad. He called me dad since I was a baby because mm. I, I guess he knew that I was going to be a father to to many people. Mm. And he says, "Dad," I said, "Dad, Dad, I got a chance to go to ARS. I'm going to recon." And my dad's crying on this other side, and he says, uh, uh, "Dad, I always knew you're the best of us. You're gonna go so much further than I ever did in the Marine Corps. You're my pride and joy. You're my number one son." And for him to say that, and I'm not even his biological yeah. son, so I give it to Papa Reyes, uh, Rudy Reyes Senior, uh, Marine Corps Infantry, uh, Vietnam veteran. That's amazing. There it is. That's amazing, <laughs> uh, Rudy. I'm gonna be honest, man. We've done 400 episodes now. This has to be the most entertaining episode. <laughs> I've this is the most I've ever been touched of? in an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And you too. And you too. Yeah. Next I, time you got to be closer to me. I, I will. I will. I've done, look, I've done 350 of Ross Pass Revolution. 750 hours total of, of pod. This is the most fascinating, Thank you, amazing uh, podcast we've ever done. Thank you so much for your time today, brother. Uh, it's, uh, my pl- it, it's my privilege. It's my we honor. Finally, we finally got you out here. Yes, brother. Yeah. And, and you know what? Think of all the people that we help. Yeah. Uh, think of all the kids we inspire. Um, uh, think of all the families that sometimes are, are struggling through uh, finance or divorce or um, or through just uh, the, the pains uh, emotionally, spiritually, and physically that our uh, brothers and sisters uh, that have been downrange go through. I'm speaking soon on the um, at the Gold Star family in Orange yeah, yeah. County. Think about all of our fallen. Uh, they get happiness and connection and pride to what we're doing. Uh, that fill, fills me with joy. Fills yep. me with joy. Amazing. Well, hey, it, this episode filled us with joy. We hope you guys enjoyed it at home as much as we did here. It is an absolute pleasure. For Jared Taylor, Rudy Reyes, D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>